Hello and warm welcome to another round of monthly macro and market wrap up where we discuss few relevant developments over the month gone by that is February 2023 latest inflation releases in major economies surprised on the upside we don't think they portend a reacceleration but they do challenge hopes of a smooth and a faster return to the target in the US overshooting inflation is mainly a services story whereas europe has wider problems market also expected demand to be materially low by this time that is 6 to 9 months post central bank started aggressive rate hikes to be sure activity momentum is moderating but not collapsing as yet this has led to a reassessment in market expectations toward more rate hikes The long and variable lags in monetary policy could leave room for some continuation in the uptick in activity data but we remain of the view that the cycle is moving towards the end what's noticeable is synchronized central bank action to curb the inflation and research shows that the policy induced disinflation are generally associated with recessions and often not a mild one Investors have perhaps understood the end game as reflected in sharp yield curve inversions even as debates on soft landing crash landing or no landing goes on the longer inflation stays too high the more central bank should feel the need to prompt economic weakness sooner and this means added credence to higher for longer now Higher for longer creates negative externalities on demand, margins and levered assets. To add, financial conditions may tighten further as central bank liquidity moderates. On a separate note, China reopening post COVID has been less enthusiastic, perhaps also marred by their new year in the end January. Whatever it be, travel related data out of China seems to be the strongest. while order momentum home sales car sales and cargo shipments remain weak policy makers in china are working to stimulate the economy whatever be it it appears that growth recovery there will largely be a story of 2 months ahead consequently chinese equities which were rallying in january fell in feb in india we had gdp release for quarter 3 fy23 Year on year prints are noisy and hence we focus on growth cagers compared to pre covid that points to a relatively weak recovery growth on 3 year cagr basis stays sub 4% to us these are a weak set of numbers especially as covid is firmly behind us now growth is mainly pulled down by weak household demand exports had been the main stay of demand post covid followed by corporate capex in recent quarters even as indian balance sheets are just in the right place to support growth we stay concerned on rub off of global factors on india's growth and project 5 to 5 and a half percent growth next fiscal we also closed on third quarter fy23 earnings and earnings were in line with expectations there was some cool off in inflationary pressures which held up ebitda autos and private banks were outperformers while metals and oil and gas were drags through the course of the year we have seen fy23 nifty eps seen some modest downgrades and earnings expectations are getting pushed out to fy24 and fy25 that said the broader picture thus far portrays that even as real demand is weak Indian earnings have held up aided by stronger nominal growth. Looking ahead, there could be some near-term risks to earning depending on how severe global slowdown is. In sum, the risk reward for equities is unattractive. While India's PE premium to the world has moderated, global multiple remains vulnerable to higher rates, weaker growth and potentially rising equity risk premium now coming to the bond market global rates increase sharply 
US 10 year jumped 70 basis point to near 44% post US CPI and non farm payroll release. Bullish run for the bonds that started last October was anticipating softer data by now that did not materialize. It is likely true that we are nearer to the end of the tightening cycle than the beginning. But central banks don't want the markets to get ahead of themselves. In the Indian market too, markets now attach a higher probability of another rate hike in April. With January CPI and global developments, the odds for an additional hike is rising, though still not our base case. But beyond April, the thesis remains that of a long pause to assess the economic impact. Ultimately, bond investors have to be comfortable that the majority of the tightening is in the past. Duration still makes sense as the pass-through from the shorter end to the longer end diminishes in the late cycle as recession or growth slowdown fears grow. When we look at the DXY, repricing of the central banks is making 2023 feel like 2022. But there are key differences on the stage of monetary cycle that we are in today. As such, we are constructive on Indian rupee when seen 6 to 12 months ahead. Signing off for this month. Thank you. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risk. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.